In the material we are using, the introductory comments to, to Lesson 4 say, Matthew chapters 8 through 10 are full of faith-building evidence of Jesus' power and authority. Jesus shows his ability to heal both near and far for both Jew and Gentile. His power over disease, nature, demons, and ultimately over sin is established. As Jesus' popularity grows, he tells the apostles and us more about what it is required more about what is required to truly follow and serve him. Going to the questions, question number one asks us, what attitudes are present in those who come to Jesus to be healed? First refers to the leper, which is chapter 8, verses 1 through 4. I'm going to read the first two verses. It says, when Jesus came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. This man doubted, or at least was uncertain, that Christ was willing to, or that Christ wanted to, help him or heal him. He doubted Christ's willingness to heal him, but he did not doubt Christ's power to heal him. We've got a reference to key places here. I'll put those in the, the uh, with the questions as we go in the order where they find their placement. Key place here is Capernaum. Chapter 8 and verse 5 brings us to that location. And uh, you can see on the map here, there's Dead Sea down here, the Jordan River flowing north, uh, flows south, but we're going north uh, up to the Sea of Galilee in the top, very northern west corner of the Sea of Galilee is Capernaum, and you see it over here on this map. I've got both of these up because some may be more helpful than the other. One one may be more helpful than the other as you look at it yourself. But uh, Capernaum, this is where uh, Jesus had now made his home base once he started his ministry. And we have that reference in um, Chapter 8, verses 5 through 13. We have it actually in verses 5 and 6. I'll read those. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. That's the reference there. Verse 6 says, Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed, suffering terribly. We're talking here again about... Um, the, the attitudes that are present in those who came to Jesus to be healed. And what we see here is that this, this man showed concern for one of his slaves, that he was a man of compassion. In verse 7, Jesus says to him, Shall I come and heal him? The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one go and he goes and that one come and he comes. I say to my servant, do this and he does it. Based on these verses, the centurion certainly showed humility and he showed tremendous faith. And Christ's address is faith in the, in the following verses after that. Question number two asks, how do people respond to the healings of Jesus? And it first references Peter's mother-in-law and gives us chapter 8, verses 14 through 17, which his mother-in-law only goes through verse 14 and 15. And I'll read those now. It says, when Jesus came into Peter's house, which was in Capernaum, he saw Peter's mother-in-law laying in bed with a, lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her and she got up and began to wait on him. Well, we see that her recovery was immediate, but her response was that she got up and began serving. Then um, another key place here, we see movement occurring in chapter 8 and verse 18, where we're told that they leave Capernaum then, and they cross the Sea of Galilee, and we're going to see that they, they end up on the west side I'm sorry, the east side. I'm trying to bring my cursor up here. East side of the Sea of Galilee, which is over here in this area on this map over here. 
on the east side of Galilee. Verse 28 tells us that Jesus and his disciples, uh, verse 28, sorry, is, is the next key place reference. Um, and, and it has them landing. The, he and his disciples cross the Sea of Galilee and land at the country of the, Gerasi, the Gergesenes or the Gadarenes. And uh, that, that again, is, is where I indicated here, if I can get my cursor to come up. Um, <laughs> it's right in that area somewhere up and down on the east side of the sea. There's uncertainty regarding the specific identity of this location, but it was clearly located, uh, as we've indicated, on the east side of the sea. And the question was, how did the people respond to the healings of Jesus? Well, the references to chapter 8, verses 28 through 34 which on this occasion Jesus had cast numerous demons out of a man. Jesus had commanded that the demons enter a herd of swine, and the swine ran into the sea and drowned. And the response was uh, from the people of the, of the town, uh, when, when they learned what had happened, they asked Jesus to leave. So that was their response. Their, remo their motive for asking him to leave was uncertain, but it could be it could be that they feared the loss uh, of more possessions. They they didn't know what Jesus' motive was. They didn't know who he was. They didn't. They were uncertain about a lot of things. I'm sure it could be that they feared Jesus' power, not knowing what he might do next. Power that can be used to to do good is power that can also be used to do evil. The next key place simply brings us back to where Jesus had been. We're told in chapter 9, verse 1, that's the key place reference, that Jesus stepped into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own town. So that would be him leaving this area and going right back to Capernaum. Question number 3 says, according to Matthew eight seventeen. And chapter 9, verses 6 and 36, why did Jesus perform his miracles? The first reference, chapter 8, verse 17, I'll begin with verse 16. It says, when evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him, and he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah, he took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. And so this verse plainly tells us that Jesus performed miracles to fulfill Old Testament prophecy. And then in chapter 9, verse 6, again, the question was, why did Jesus perform miracles? In 9, verse 6, Jesus, we're, we're told, um, I, I'm sorry, Jesus said, uh, and, and this was the occasion where, um, Jesus proclaimed that, that a man's sins were forgiven. Uh, he was going to heal the paralytic, he says. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, get up, take up your mat, and go home. So, in, well, the point is that uh, I should have read the entire text, but um, we're no doubt you have, and we're familiar with the text that these uh, scribes who were present there questioned Jesus, saying that uh, this man's sins were forgiven. And, of course, they reasoned within themselves, and, and uh, Jesus did not dispute it, obviously, that only God can forgive someone's sins. And so Jesus just had just proclaimed that this man's sins were forgiven. And so in the verse we just read, chapter 9, verse 6, Jesus stated that he was going to perform this miracle in order to show his critics in essence, who he really was. Chapter 9, verse 36 says, When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And so the question was, again, why did Jesus perform miracles? On this occasion, we were told that Jesus performed this miracle, the feeding of the 5,000, because he was moved with compassion for the people. Question number four asks, why is Jesus criticized for spending time in the house of Matthew? And then the second question, second part of that question, or the second question in question number four, is what is the meaning of Jesus' response in, in this 
covers the section of chapter 9, verses 9 through 13. That text says, As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him, and Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Who, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I have come, Jesus says, not to call the righteous, but sinners. The question was, why is Jesus criticized for spending time in the house of Matthew? Jesus was criticized for eating with sinners. The Pharisees had no problem with teaching sinners, but they didn't believe one should eat with them because they saw this as endorsing their sin. The second part of this question was, what is the meaning of Jesus' response? Well, I'll read verses 12 and 13 again. Jesus said in response to this state, this, uh, this question about him eating with sinners, he said, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous but sinners. Jesus' response was that he was a physician, and physicians need to spend time helping and healing the sick. Throughout the Old Testament prophets and into Jesus' day, the people often fell into the practice of thinking that their sacrifices would make up for their failed attitudes and actions. In the latter part of that Jesus' response, Jesus was saying that God had higher regard for someone who was merciful to those in need than for those who lacked mercy yet were sticklers about offering sacrifices. Question number five says, how does the criticism of Jesus escalate? Chapter 9, verse 11, and then chapter 9, verse 34. Chapter 9, verses 10 and 11 says, while Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, reference we just noted, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Then to get the context of verse 34, I'll start with verse 32. It says, While they were going out, a man who was demon-possessed and could not talk was brought to Jesus. And when the demon was driven out, the man who had been mute spoke. The crowd was amazed and said, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, It is by the prince of demons that he drives out demons. These two verses show that the Pharisees were casting aspersions at, at Jesus regarding those with whom he was associated. In verse 11, they're criticizing him for associating with sinners, with sinful people. But in verse 34, they're actually now accusing him of associating with or even in being in league with Satan himself. So we see the clear escalation there. As his popularity grew, there hatred of him grew as well. That is the hatred of the Pharisees. Question number six says, who were the apostles sent to, uh, who were the apostles sent to preach to, and what would indicate that they had found a worthy person, house, or city? And the references to chapter 10 verses 1 through 15. We have another key place referred to here in chapter 10 verse 6. I'll read verses 5 and 6. It says, These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In this text, Jesus sent, um, sent out the twelve on what is commonly called the limited commission. He limited or restricted them to go out to teach only Jews, not Gentiles. He prohibited them from going into the Gentile regions, which included the region of Samaria. In Matthew chapter 28, Jesus sends them out again into the whole world to teach the gospel to everyone with no restrictions regarding nationality. So a key place here would be, there it is, 
that again, they are in Galilee and Jesus sent them out and, and he's prohibited them from entering this area here in the center. That's really why I've got the second map up. This shows some area here, but it doesn't show the political boundaries, which this one does. And so they were to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So they were to go into Jewish territory only, not yet were they allowed to go into the area of the Gentiles. Um, and so the question was, what would indicate that they'd found a, a, a worthy person, house, or city? Well, those who received the apostles and their message were considered worthy. And so that that would be when they, uh, that would be the answer to that question. <laughs> I'll get it out. Um, the next key place is chapter 10 and verse 15, which um, um, addresses the uh, the, the uh, issue of them finding coming upon people who were not worthy. This uh, refers to Sodom and Gomorrah. Jesus said that those who would not receive the apostles or their teachings would be judged more harshly than the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah are referenced here as an example of destruction, as an example of judgment that was brought upon those people by God because of their wickedness. Depending on whom you ask, Sodom and Gomorrah are understood to have been located at either the north or the south end of the Sea of, of the Dead Sea, rather. Uh, actually, the east side of the Dead Sea has also been suggested. On our map, we're down here, um, either at the north end, the south end. Here's understood to be Zoar, which is why one of the reasons that some people um, think this is the south end. That's where Lot sought to, to go to for safety, uh, or the east side as well. Somewhere in this general area is, is understood to have been um, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Question number seven says, Jesus tells the apostles to respond to difficulty by saying, do not, many times. So on many different occasions, Jesus said, do not, do this, do not do that. Uh, in, in how to respond to difficult situations. And so it says, complete these phrases, and it gives us five verse references, chapter 10, verses 19, 26, 28, 31, and 34. The context of these verses is that of Jesus sending out the apostles to teach the gospel. He tells them that they will encounter resistance, opposition, and persecution from those in positions of authority. He says in verse 19, when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say. In verse 26, he says, So do not be afraid of them, for there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. Verse 28, he says, Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Verse 31 says, so do not be afraid. You are worth more, more than many sparrows. And in verse 34, he says, do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. We have three application uh, questions or responses. Uh, Application 8, Application 9, and Application 10. Steve Bonk submitted his responses to the applications, and I'll read his responses. Number 8 begins, I admire and will imitate Jesus' example of sharing blessings and the gospel with the undeserving and powerless. Number 9 says, To better follow Jesus, I will change, reduce, the amount of effort I exert toward unreceptive people. Application 10 says, Something I will tell others about Jesus is His amazing power and authority over all things earthly and heavenly. In carrying out uh, Christ's instructions in chapter 9 and verse 38, we are told to pray 
for the Lord of harvest to send out workers into his harvest. Next week's class will be Lesson 5, and we're going to be looking at Matthew chapters 11 and 12.